Aging and disease are biochemical processes that happen over many decades. So if we track and optimize well-established biomarkers of organ and systemic function, can aging and disease risk be slowed? So that's the central premise of the YouTube channel. And with that in mind, two weeks ago, I blood tested for the third time in 2024. And note that this is blood test number 51 since August of 2015. So with that in mind, what's my biological age? And we can see that data here. This is using Dr. Morgan Levine's phenotypic age calculator as a metric of biological age. And if you have blood test data and want to calculate your own biological age using this test, there's a downloadable Excel link in the video's description. So when entering these data, I get a biological age of 35.2 years, which is 16.1 years younger than my chronological. Note that 51.2 minus 35.2 should be 16.0, but with rounding, it comes to 16.1. Now, the lab measurement, Quest Diagnostic Lab Measurement for HSCRP was less than 0.3 milligrams per liter. So that's their detection limit. So the data could actually be a bit below 35.2 as it can't be higher than 0.3, but it could be lower than 0.3. And rather than looking at data entered into a spreadsheet, the screenshots of the lab report are included on Patreon. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Now, it's generally not uh, a good idea to get too excited or too down about one blood test. So for more context, let's have a look at biological age results using this test since 2018, as I have 32 tests over that time period, which is what we can see here. So from 2018 to 2019, I did, wasn't uh, measuring HSCRP at every test. And actually, I wasn't measuring it at all prior to this calculator becoming available. So over three tests, in two years, average pheno age or biological age was 36.1 years. And then starting in 2020, I started testing a lot more often, a lot, at least six times per year. So for six tests each in 2020 and 2021, average biological age using this test was 35.6 years over those 12 tests. And then in 2022, seven test average was 33.8 years. So I did much better than 2020 and 2021. Uh, not as well, not as good in 2023 to 34.7, and including this 35.2 in 2024, thus far over three tests, average biological age is 33.7 years. So we can see from these 32 tests that I've potentially slowed biological age. I've never claimed to quote unquote reverse biological age or reverse aging. That's not what this approach is all about. It's the live long enough to live forever approach, slowing biological age as much as we can with exercise, diet, and you know targeted uh, amounts of macro and micronutrients. So at best, I'm slowing it, potentially giving myself a, a long enough time for real rejuvenation tech to become available. All right, so what I haven't yet showed is how good or not is this calculator? And I covered that in an earlier video, so I don't want to go through that, through that again in this video. If you missed it, it'll be in the right corner. But for now, I want to use a different approach to show how good or not that this calculator is. And that's by looking at how did these values compare against age expected data. And to illustrate that, I'm, we'll, we'll, let's take a look at five of these biomarkers, albumin, glucose, C-reactive protein, percentage of lymphocytes, and the red blood cell distribution with RDW. So first, starting with the RDW percentage, and as a quick aside, that's a measure of the variability for red blood cell volume, MCV. So when looking at the plot for RDW percent versus age, and note that this is a relatively small study of only 707 people, if anybody's come across age-related changes for the RDW that are, have a much larger sample size, as that will be expected to be more representative of what's going on in the general population, please post it in the comments. I'd, I'd be happy to give you a shout out in a future video. So in this plot, we've got the RDW percent on the y-axis plotted against age. And you can see that there is a trend line there. And when highlighting it in red, we can see that the RDW percent increases during aging. Now, based on the age expected data, so where my chronological age extrapolates onto the trend line, RDW should be 14% or an average RDW for my chronological age would be 14%. In contrast, for this test, it was 11.7% which is an average value that will be more likely to be found in youth relative to older ages. So what happens to biological age if we change the RDW to age expected 14%? And that's what I've done here, changed it there to 14%, and we can see that there's a big jump for biological age, an eight-year increase to 43 and a half years. Now note that this is just one test. 
how well have I done since I started tracking blood biomarkers, consistently tracking them in 2015. So what's my data since 2015? So I have 48 tests for the RDW over that nine year period. And we can see that here. And when using, uh, when looking at the linear correlation between the RDW percent with chronological age, we can see that there's a significant inverse correlation with a correlation coefficient of negative 0.63 and a p-value that's less than 0.05. In other words, I've significantly resisted the age-related increase for the RDW percentage. All right, so next up, let's use the same approach and go through glucose. So glucose, we probably all know, increases during aging. We'll see that here on this plot, which is a plot of average fasting glucose or mean fasting glucose plotted against age. And this is a much larger study relative to the RDW study of 12.5 million people. So as I mentioned, glucose increases during aging with average values in youth for both men in uh, green and women in red, around 85 milligrams per deciliter that increased to more than 100 milligrams per deciliter in 88-year-olds. Now, based on age expected data and highlighted with that red arrow, glucose levels should have increased since 2015 with a, a, an average of 99 milligrams per deciliter for someone of my current chronological age, 51 years. In contrast, for this test, glucose was 88 milligrams per deciliter, which, which is an average value that would be expected to be found in someone approximately half of my chronological age. So just like we did for the RDW, what happens to biological age if we change glucose to age expected? And that's what I've done here. Now glucose is 99, and in conjunction with an RDW that's 14, we can see that biological age has now increased to almost 45 years. But again, this is just one test. How well or not have I done in resisting age-related changes for glucose since 2015? And that's what we can see here, over 49 tests. Now here, this isn't a clearly a linear correlation. We may, there, there may be two things going on here. And actually it's an inverse J, J shape. So I used a polynomial function in Excel to uh, derive this, this plot. So we can see that I, I was increasing in terms of blood glucose levels up until around 48 years old. And now some of that may be related to age, but another side of that story is I was making dietary changes uh, and one aspect of that is going too high fat, in my case, for whatever reason, is associated with higher glucose. So it could be some related to diet change and, and trying to have a variability in my data so I can look at correlations for which aspects of diet may impact glucose. And there may be some aspects of age up to 48 years. But over the past three years, we can see that I've been able to reduce blood glucose levels. Nonetheless, when looking at all data since 2015, average glucose is 89 and a half years. And when putting that back onto the plot on the right would be an average value for what we'd expect to uh, find for someone that's about 20 years chronologically younger. All right, next up, albumin. And in this plot for albumin versus age, it includes about 1.1 million people. So on the y-axis, we've got serum albumin, and on the x, we've got uh, age. Now, albumin levels, as you can clearly see, decline during aging, with peak values for women and men around 45 and 46 grams per liter, that declined to about 36 grams per liter in 100-year-old centenarians. Now, age expected albumin, based on my chronological age, you can see the red arrow, it should be declining over that nine-year period that I have data. So age expected albumin should be around 43 grams per liter or 4.3 grams per deciliter. In contrast, for this test, we can see that albumin was 4.9, which would put me closer to youth, and we're considering it declines during aging, that's where we it would be more likely to, to be found. And just like we did for the other biomarkers, what happens to biological age if we change albumin to age, age expected? So that's what I've done. Albumin is now 4.3. Glucose is uh, age expected at 99. MC, uh, RCW also age expected at 14. Now we can see the biological age is up to 47 just by changing three of these biomarkers to age expected. But this is just one test, so how well or not have I done in resisting the age-related change for albumin since 2015? And I have 50 tests for albumin over that uh, time period, and that's what we can see here. And we can see that there isn't an obvious trend. In fact, the trend line is basically flat. And my average albumin levels over this nine-year period, 50 tests, is 4.9 grams per deciliter, which once again would be more likely to be found in youth relative to older ages or an average, on, on average, it would be more likely to be found in youth relative to older ages. All right, next up is C-reactive protein. And in this plot of 
a high sensitivity C-reactive protein, HSCRP versus H. This is a study of about 6,100 people. This is the largest study that I've found that has, you know, a quote unquote pretty, pretty picture to show in videos. So if anyone's come across uh, pictures of age-related changes for HSCRP in a larger, with a larger sample size, please post it in the comments. Again, I'd be happy to give you a shout out in a future video. On the waxes, we've got HSCRP plotted against different age groups. And this is from younger than 18 to older than 70. And we can see here that HSCRP increases during aging. Now, based on age expected data, average uh, HSCRP for someone of my current chronological age would be 1.4 milligrams per liter. In contrast, for this test, it was 0.3 milligrams per liter. And actually, as I mentioned earlier, for 17 consecutive tests, it was 0.3 milligrams per liter, which would be below the range for each of these age groups, even the youngest age group. All right, so just like we did for the other biomarkers, what happens to biological age if we change HSCRP to age expected 1.4 milligrams per liter? And I've done that here in conjunction with the other biomarkers being age expected. Now biological age is up to 48.6 years. Now we're getting pretty close to my current chronological age, and we've only changed four of PhenoAge's biomarkers. But as I mentioned, this is just one test. How well have I done in resisting the age-related increase for HSCRP since 2015? And for HSCRP, I mentioned I only started measuring it in 2018. I have 35 tests over that six-year period, as shown here. And I probably should have used a polynomial, uh, polynomial function to illustrate uh, potential trends because it looks like there's a, an increase and then a decrease, again, starting at around 48 years. But nonetheless, there is a significant linear correlation inverse in other words, uh, as I've aged chronologically, I've significantly reduced HSCRP. In other words, I've resisted here too the age-related HSCRP increase. All right, last but not least, let's go through the lymphocyte percentage, which is defined as lymphocytes divided by total amount of white blood cells. So in this plot of lymphocyte percentage versus age, it includes almost 378,000 people. Percentage of lymphocytes on the y-axis plotted against chronological age on the x. And here we can see that the lymphocyte percentage declines during aging for both men in green and women in blue. Uh, yeah, I had that right. I thought I had it backwards. With relatively higher values in 20-year-olds, and relatively lower values in 90-year-olds. Now, based on age expected, the average value for age expected data for the lymphocyte percentage, it would be 24.2% for someone of my current chronological age. In contrast, for this test, the lymphocyte percentage was 36.6%, which would be off the charts and more, be more likely to be found in youth relative to older ages when considering that the lymphocyte percentage declines during aging. So just like we did for the other biomarkers, what happens to biological age if we change the lymphocyte percentage to age expected? And I've done that here. Now the lymphocyte percentage is 24.2 in conjunction with age expected uh, data for albumin, uh, glucose, CRP, and the RDW, now we can see biological age is just one year away from my chronological age. So just by changing five biomarkers using this biological age tool and using age expected data, that it's pretty good for, you know, uh, predicting your chronological age based on age expected values. All right, so this is just one test. What's my data since 2015? How well have I resisted the age-related or not? How well have I resisted uh, the age-related decline for the lymphocyte percentage? And I have 48 tests over that nine-year time period, as shown here. And here, too, there's a uh, J, J-shaped curve. So within my own data, there was a decline for the lymphocyte percentage up until, again, 48 years after which I've been able to increase it. Now, in terms of three of these biomarkers, where it seems like uh, around 48 years that I've been able to resist or better resist age-related changes, what did I do? So over the past three years, I've had a slow and steady, intentional uh, weight loss, mostly fat loss, um, with the goal in getting as lean as possible to see what that would do to my biomarkers. So for at least three, these three biomarkers, being leaner has a, uh, may have a positive effect. Now, my average lymphocyte percentage over these 48 tests is 41.9%, which when looking at the plot on the right would still put me at relatively youthful as when considering that the lymphocyte percentage declines during aging. Now, in addition to body weight, the diet and supplements, or maybe not supplements, may be contributing to these data. So how, how does diet or what is the diet and supplement approach that corresponds to blood test number th uh, three in 2024? And in the interest of time, I'll cover that a week from today uh, on May 19th. So if you're interested in that, come back and check it out. 
All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon, where I offer blood test consults. We've also got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, NED quantification, or microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes ApoB and Grimage, green tea, diet, tra diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.